29-year-old Sam Gray found out the hard way that scammers were using her bank card to watch Netflix. I noticed that I had two charges in the same month for Netflix and I thought that was very weird and not right. Um, and so I looked into it and it happened month after month after month. There was multiple charges every month. And you can see here at the very start. She discovered the card had been illegally used for two years on Netflix and around $300 was taken from the account, but the bank only refunded part of the money. I think they probably could be refunding more. Uh, I know that my experiences certainly haven't been that I get the full amount back. $300 doesn't seem like much, but it adds up. The industry self-regulator says card fraud rose by just over 9% from 2020 to the 2021 financial year to nearly half a billion dollars. And 1.4 million people were victims of card fraud last year as more people worked online from home. Anna Bly, the head of the Australian Banking Association, says banks are spending big on technology to keep ahead of the fraudsters. $490 million, which sounds like a lot of money, but in the context um, of billions and billions of dollars worth of transactions every year, I think it does tell us our system is relatively safe. While financial institutions are liable for fraudulent transactions, there are grey areas. You probably won't get a refund if you click on a fake link for online banking or if you deliberately or accidentally reveal your PIN. In most cases where the customer has not breached the terms and conditions of their card, so uh, they haven't given their card to somebody else to use, they haven't given away their PIN number, Despite the rising cost, Morningstar banking analyst Nathan Zayer says banks would face a backlash if they stopped refunding customers. I think if you look in the context of the bank's earnings, it's not a major issue. I mean, I think they see it as a cost of doing business, essentially. While most victims of card fraud are reimbursed, Jared Brody from the Consumer Action Law Centre sees scammers as the bigger threat. Australians lost more than $2 billion from scams last year. I think it's grown significantly during the pandemic period where people are engaging in much more electronic commerce at home. He wants to see new UK-style protections put in place here, such as a contingent reimbursement code, which forces banks to offer compensation to people who are tricked into sending money to criminals. In the UK, there has been reform that uh, requires banks in these circumstances to reimburse blameless customers uh, when they have been tricked into making transactions. But the banks are fighting proposals here for new obligations to prevent scams or reimburse customers. They say that blanket refunds will encourage the scammers and customers may take less care. For Sam Gray, the solution is to have a separate debit card for payments like Netflix. Good you. We put the money in and when money is gone, that's gone. So if a transaction bounces, we know that money's been taken out that shouldn't have been. Outwitting the scammers at their own game.